when you look at the top, you know, top 10 reasons, the first thing is that there's no scale from mild to severe or from one to 10 for the severe of an autoimmune trigger. Each person suffering from autoimmune, autoimmune will have their own individualized response to each trigger. So that being said, is like when you're looking at when you're looking at autoimmunity and you're looking at the trigger, for example, sleep will be the first thing we talk about. You may have a uh, significant response if you lose sleep, if you have autoimmune disease, and or you may not. So each person has a has significant uh, severities based on different triggers. So, you know, there's one thing is when you look at people that are suffering from autoimmunity, even the same autoimmune disease, and even within the same family members uh, with the same autoimmune disease, for some of them, a dietary trigger could be substantial. For others, it could be a lifestyle trigger. And, and it varies. And sometimes it can change over time as you as you go through your lifespan. When you're and you when you're lung, let's say, let's say you were diagnosed with an autoimmune disease when you were 30, and, and if you lost sleep, it was no big issue. But it, you know, maybe you're 45 now, and now if you lose sleep, you definitely have a trigger for, for your autoimmune disease. So in the literature, in, in the autoimmune disease literature, there's some very uh, good research and, and and known mechanisms of how sleep really impacts autoimmunity. This is a diagram. It's, it's kind of complex. It's just really showing you the inflammatory cascade and genes turning on towards the inflammatory response, promoting inflammation and then treating autoimmunity. But one of the things to understand about autoimmune disease is you really have to, you have to really look at how sleep impacts you. And you may not know because you may not be getting proper sleep. The biggest mistakes that I've seen patients make with sleep is they just, they're just uh, not letting their brain calm down. They're still on their computers or still on their phone late at night. And this really doesn't allow their brain to rest. So we really want to make sure that you're getting adequate sleep. So sometimes people ask what's adequate sleep. Adequate sleep would be you basically wake up on your own. You don't have to have some, some type of device wake you up. If you wake up at, at a time and you just feel rested, uh, that would be adequate, adequate sleep. Some people may have never experienced that their whole life. But that's really what the goal is with autoimmunity. And if you haven't had adequate sleep and you're dealing with autoimmunity, you may really put some effort into trying to improve your, improve your sleep. And it may take you, you know, a week or two to really get, to really get set into a routine that allows you to have adequate sleep. So, you know, some people say, well, I can only get six hours. I can only get eight hours. I just, I just, you know, I'm not used to it. Well, you have to kind of make your body used to it. So if you, if you're dealing with autoimmunity, you really want to look at, look at this mechanism itself. But for the most part, you have to understand that when you're sleeping, your immune system is actually modulating and priming. So there's different effects on the immune system than when you're awake than when you're asleep. So when you're asleep, there's different hormones like melatonin and cortisol and, and different types of cytokines or cell messenger proteins that turn on and turn off in a cycle through your REM cycles that then help modulate your, your normal immune response. And when you're not getting enough sleep, these things tend to get, get to be disrupted and then it really promotes an inflammatory response, which can be a trigger. So here you can see, you know, lack of sleep can increase inflammation, which is right, increase cytokine expression. These are all things that promote autoimmunity, break down the blood brain barrier. Uh, it can do the same thing to the, to the gut barrier. It can impact blood flow to the brain. It can, it can really have a significant impact towards your systemic inflammatory response. So, you know, if you're dealing with autoimmunity, you know, one of the things to, to think about is not just focus on, let's say, your diet only in gluten. This, this, could be, this could be a big deal for you. And it's something you definitely want to invest in some time in.